Uh, I started looking at the spec sheet of this thing and I realized that no, they didn't just toss two 6,000 XP inverters into the same case. Man, it seems like, it seems like it was just a year or two ago where we were looking at these grow watt inverters and we're like, man, five kilowatt inverter, 240 volt, throw a transformer at it, 6,000 watts of panels, stack it, can run my whole house off grid, which is cool. You know, it's still a capable inverter and whatnot, but then EG4 was like, yeah, we're gonna one up ourselves and get ourselves these 6,000 XP inverters, which are built by Lux Power. It's a hybrid inverter in other parts of the world. It's a split phase natively. Um, instead of having to run a transformer, you know, you gain some efficiency back there. Uh, and it'll run 8,000 watts in from solar. So you could throw, you know, 10 kilowatts of panels at it and it'll charge up parallel you know, 16 units worth. I don't think anybody has gone that big with the 6,000 XP. Um, really cool inverter. Well, that was last year. So, you know, what have you done for me today? They have now released, pre-orders are happening right now, the EG4 12,000 XP off-grid inverter. And in my mind, I knew this was coming. I figured the 12,000 XP, it's probably gonna be like two 6,000s in the same case, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of people that 6,000 wasn't big enough. And so going into it, it's like, do I do two 6,000s or do I just go with a single 12 KPV or an 18 KPV? But they're way more expensive, but I don't want a bunch of inverters on my wall. Anyway, I digress. Uh, I started looking at the spec sheet of this thing and I realized that no, they didn't just toss two 6,000 XP inverters into the same case. This thing can handle 24 kilowatts of PV input. And that's not your array is 24 kilowatts and that's over panel, just like the 10 kilowatts on the 6,000 XP. You could throw 10 KW at it. It's only gonna use eight of it according to the spec sheet here, right? No, no, this is 24 kilowatts of usable PV. So it'll run 12 kilowatts of AC output and 12 kilowatts of battery charging at the same time. So they've got a separate number for how far you can over panel it. That's, at, that's 28 kilowatts. So this single inverter, this single inverter, which is 2,500 bucks, you can put 28,000 watts of solar panels into. And I don't, it's just like, the magnitude of that i think just blows my mind because like when i put solar on my house i put 8.3 kilowatts on the roof knowing that that was like low I, I needed more than that for my house but like that's a reasonable amount of solar to put on someone's house if you're out in california without air conditioning you know people out there have two three kilowatts on the roof and that that can like offset their entire bill of course here in texas in the south or, or maybe up north if you got electric heat you know you need more than that and times have changed since 20 years ago when you know two or three kilowatts might cost you forty thousand dollars but the fact that we're here where we can buy a twenty five hundred dollar inverter and put twenty four thousand watts of of charging and inverting going on at the same time is absolutely crazy okay i'll, I'll get off that soapbox some other things that i noticed about this inverter the idle consumption i was a little bit disappointed about this but they have done software updates in the past with like the 6000 xp to improve the idle consumption I, correct me if i'm wrong but i believe that's the case this one is listed as in standby mode and it's got an asterisk which means down here that they've got 300 volts of of pv coming in um, that we're running at about 70 watts. Now, if we go to the 6,000 XP, they have it broken out a little bit more. So they say that with PV, it's at 30 watts, and then with battery is 50, and with AC is 50. So that tells me that with the 70 watts, we're a little over double of what the 6,000 XP would be. Generally speaking, the bigger your inverter, the more your idle consumption is. Generally speaking, not always a one-to-one. -one. I had an old Schneider transformer-based uh, 6,000 watt inverter, and it was like 43 watts at idle. Um, a lot better than it, most of the, you know, Mickey Mouse inverters out here that were from China. Um, and that thing was from like 2014 or something. Like it was an old inverter, maybe 2012. Anyway, so that's crazy. It does recommend at least a 400 amp hour battery bank, but that's 20 kilowatt hours. If you're talking about a 12,000 watt inverter, you're probably planning on that anyway. This thing can do a 100 amp 
pass through from the grid. So a 200 amp breaker panel is good for 48,000 watts. So if you think about this inverter, it can transfer, it can pass through 100 amps, which is double what it can put out as just an inverter. So you could put two of these on a house and be kind of the same as like an 18 kPV, um, where you have that 200 amp pass through, except you actually have 24,000 watts of off grid power available if the grid is not up, which, I, I don't know about you, but that'd run my house um, pretty slick. And it can transfer 90 amps from the generator. I don't know why that's a little bit smaller, maybe because the generator terminals are not as big as the grid terminals. Um, maybe there's a reason for that. Something that I really like about these 12,000 XPs and this 6,000 XP compared to say the older GrowWatt, which a lot of people use, and I'm sure a lot of people are still using, um, they get some of the hybrid features. Because when you talk about an off-grid versus a hybrid, the main thing is that they can't export to the grid. And with the, you know, with the 5,000 watt grow watt, like I don't think it was ever designed to export from the grid. This was an off-grid inverter. With the 6,000 XP, it technically could. And maybe that's the case with a lot of these inverters coming out nowadays is that they technically could. Because I mean, I suppose it really is just a software thing, right? If it can ingest power onto a bypass, you know, pass through in the inverter, then theoretically it could, you know, export that power instead of just using it for loads on the load output side. In the 18 kPV, there's an option, and the 12 kPV, there's an option to run an on grid or off grid mode. The difference being that when you're in on grid mode, your inverter physically connects the grid to your loads. All it's doing in on grid mode is it's measuring current you know, with the CTs to see how much is coming from the grid. And what it's doing is in self-consume mode, it's just zeroing out those CTs. The problem becomes, and this is probably why they added that option, the problem becomes um, if you've got a big load going on in the house that suddenly goes away, well, you're going to get a little bit of a power spike back to the grid. And the utility could see that if they're looking for that. They may have alerts for that, set up for that. It might just be something that they would only look into if they notice you're not using much power and they're like, I wonder if they're bypassing their meter. Anyway, so you can select that to be in off-grid mode. And what happens then is you have to supply all of your energy from solar and battery. You can't just pull a little bit extra from the grid. And someone correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe this is right. So if you're in off-grid mode, it's either or. Either you're supplying all your power from battery and solar, or you're supplying your power from the grid. And it can swap between the two, which is how older style or a lot of off-grid like SRNE, Palmist, or Renogy inverters would work. It's one or the other. Um, and you can always do that. That way you can make sure that you're not sending power out to the grid. And probably what it's doing there is flipping a relay so that there's no grid. And it can always flip that relay back on if the battery state gets low and you need to transfer back to the grid. Much more like an automatic transfer switch than a hybrid inverter. I was talking about the 6000 XP in hybrids though. It gets some of the hybrid functionality. I don't think it has that functionality. I think that switch is permanently off. However, you can do things like AC couple now. So the 6000 XP just over the past couple months received a new update, firmware update, where you can AC couple grid tie inverters and add AC capacity to the EG4 6000 XP, which is something that I think is unprecedented with off-grid inverters. You know, like the Schneider can do that, but the Schneider is a hybrid inverter even though it's used a lot in off-grid functionality which is kind of what the 6000 xp is so saying all of that i like that we have hybrid inverters that are configured as off-grid inverters because it gives us the ability to have better firmware for for doing things that are kind of a little bit odd um, so excited about the 12,000 XP. I think that's going to go over really well. If you want to see some more details on it, I've got the link down below to Signature Solar that you can get the spec sheet in the manual and go through that yourself. Thumbs up EG4. I think, uh, I think this product is going to go over well.